Hey everybody, this is Pete, and in this video, I want to demonstrate a solution to a simple yet vexing problem inside of the inventor assemblies. So here I've placed a simple square drive fastener, but if we look over here at the member name, you see it's pretty atrocious. <laughs> Not incorrect, but if I have a normal sc uh, scaled browser, I have to constantly scroll across here just to try and see what this part actually is. So we're going to edit the family table, create a custom column, and then we're going to use that to populate the display name. So I've already taken the time to create a new library. I've already copied the family over, it's all set. So if you're curious about that, I have a video that I'll link in the description that explains how to create a custom library. So we'll come over here and we'll edit the family table. And one of the things I want to do is I want to edit the part number as well because I'm going to use that to drive that display name. And I want to make my part number really descriptive. So I want to make use of the thread description, but I don't want the number sign. So I can create a custom column. I will call it fastener size. Easy for me to spell. There we go. I knew I could do it. And there's no easy way to get rid of the number sign inside of the family table, but we can use Excel and all of its high powered functionality to create a more streamlined data column. So we'll jump over to Excel. All right, so here we are in Excel. And what I wanna do is create a formula that will take out the number sign and just leave the digit. So there is a formula that we can use. The substitute formula allows me to grab the text. I can parse out the text I don't want, which is the number sign, and then I can replace it with double quotes, which means nothing. So I go ahead and hit enter and boom, nothing happens. <laughs> and that's because when we bring the data out of the family table, it's just text. So we have to format the cell to use the general category. Then when we double click inside and hit enter, it actually engages the formula. So I'm gonna sweep the formula all the way down. You'll notice some of these don't have the number sign. So in that case, the formula just ignores them. But that's a really quick and easy way to make modifications. We'll save that, close out the spreadsheet, and then we'll jump back into the family table. So we're back inside the family table and we can see that our fastener size has been populated. So I'll go ahead and edit the part number really quickly. I'm going to replace it with at least what I consider to be a little bit more descriptive name. I'll call this a square drive, it's a pan head, oops, and it's a machine screw. And then I'm going to replace all of this information on the back end with the info that I want, fastener size, and the ampersand just allows me to put in uh, text-based characters. And then I want the thread per unit. And then lastly, we want nominal length. So now that we've created that, we can see that we get, in my view, a bit more of a descriptive part number. And then we'll simply add a column called display name. And inside, we're gonna keep it simple. And just grab that part number. Critical bit though, is right here. We can map this to the inventor property display name. So this is what is going to be utilized by the assembly. We hit okay. I'll hit okay to accept all of those publish details. I usually forget to do this, so I hit save here just for good measure. And then let's refresh that. So we'll refresh it. It says it's out of date. We hit refresh. Let that grind away for a moment, hit close. And there you can see that it replaces it with the more appropriate and distinct member display name. So that's it. 
There are other ways you could potentially do that. This is the surest way to get exactly what you want is to create that column in the family table and then map it directly to the display name. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know and have a blessed day.